Africa Day is one of the most significant days in the history of the people of Africa. It's a day that will remember our history and identity as Africans, taking stock of where we come from and where we are headed as people of Africa in terms of progress we have made socially, politically, and economically. For this part, the university has decided not to talk the talk, but to walk the path. Consistent with, its vi with this vision, we are redefining ourselves as the University of Zuland, not as a university that is restructured for relevance, but we have decided to state unapolog unapologetically that we want to be known as a distinct African university. In so doing, we want to separate ourselves from separately an institution that is located in the continent while its intellectual and scholastic gaze is elsewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Africa Day commemoration lecture held in partnership with the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. I want to thank you all. I'd like to call upon Professor Kwesi Pra, Sociology Professor and Founder and Director of the Center for Advanced Studies of African Society. I elected to pivot my address around two central points two points which are interrelated, closely interrelated, in fact, points that cannot be pulled apart. That is the, the axis between language and culture. And locate this in the broad sweep of history of, of our people and see where we are headed, know, knowing where we are coming from. Somebody was suggesting that we should have now polyandry. That's the opposite of polygyny. But both are types of polygamous uh, uh, arrangements where uh, one lady can have three, four, five husbands as you know, she pleases. <laughs> and you see, the, all the backward ideas, you know, unhelpful ideas, are put into this rubric of African culture. If you lose your language, you lose your ritual practices, you lose your religion, you lose your customs and your beliefs, then you don't die physically. The culture doesn't die necessarily physically you become somebody else. You may be black, but you become part of a culture which you have assimilated to. I think we should look at culture properly. 
This is the real battleground. Hugh Masekela made a comment. He said, watching children and so on, he said, 20 years from now, they would be saying, we were once Africans. Language light is the central pillar on which the whole of the edifice of culture rests. The Africanus proved it here. In the same space of time, 20 years, that is taking us to move from the end of apartheid to the present, they elevated, they created a language which could, could, you could study in, you could work in, you could create everything in. Look at us. Now, how many years after the end of our birthday? What are we doing? What are our children doing now? When you ask your child, he needs to to ask him the question. What, what are you saying now? The child begins to talk to you in English to ask you, what are you saying in Zulu? Now, it shows you the depth of our alienation. I want to emphasize again that the key for us is culture, particularly, particularly language. If we want to lift our society by the bootstraps, then take the language to the people. Take knowledge to the people in the languages they know. That way we will transform Africa and the people will have their pride back. And the collective memory will come back. The enemy memory which was broken by colonialism would start reconstituting itself. In other words, we will relate back into our history through our languages. Also, the effects of these borders, which were created 70, about 100 years ago, to divide us, and so on, will lose, slowly lose their impact. My message this year for the Africa Day celebrations is the same. Please let us start seriously doing something with our languages. Let's empower ourselves with our languages. And that way, we will break through in no time. In no time. If we start seriously, within 10 to 15 years, we will break through. I'm sorry for being a bit sententious, but that's my contribution. What it is that is in language and the power of language and why the colonizers were so afraid of culture and language of indigenous people. I think the answer lies more in what Ngoki Waitiongo once said. When he said while he was in prison, he was surprised why he's been imprisoned for working in an African language. But when he was working in an English language, he was not imprisoned. He then realized at that time while in prison, the power between the language and the use of power itself and the meaning of power. So we really appreciate, Professor, what you have said. In this message of the minister, I think there is an answer there about the unity of Africans. When the father of African unity, first president, of democratic president of Ghana said, I am not African because I was born in Africa. I am 
African because Africa was born in me. Close quote. In other words, your connectedness to your own continent and your geographic space is crucial. Because in one way or the other, the cultures that you learn and the heritage that get bestowed on you is mainly based on the environment where you were born. And maybe that's why we call ourselves Africans. So I agree with you, Professor, that we must do more to empower the use of our languages. And as a director, respond, a director general responsible for pioneering that policy, I think you have challenged me even more to go back and see that the promotion of African or previously disadvantaged languages act that was published in 2012 is not being used. Our people go to our offices, they are forced to speak English. Doesn't matter whether the office of government is in rural area or not. So we are inflicting pain by discarding our own culture, our own heritage, our own language. It's a problem. We must change the mindset. We want to be able to go African, and it's not a mistake. Thank you very much. We should get to a level where Every day must be Africa Day. But the reason why we still have Africa Day is uh, because we recognize and we remind ourselves that uh, we still have work to do. So I would like to say we take the presentations today, DG and Professor Pra, as a, a very important assignment an assignment that when we meet again, we would have said, we should be able to say this as far as we have actually gone. There'll be no economic liberation until there is a cultural liberation. Culture and language will give us the confidence to be able to face the future. Vice Chancellor, I hope uh, I have done justice instead of only saying I concur, which is what I would prefer. Mm -hmm.